man, sir. The day has finally come to get rid of my Kalinga and yellow nutsedge. Let's have a look at that quick. Right, so the easy one to spot is yellow nutsedge. Now, what you're looking at here is a combination of Kikuyu runners sticking their heads up and a bit of nutsedge. The yellow nutsedge stands out like a sore thumb. You can very easily see it. But the Kalinga almost looks like fine fescue. See there's a little dark green tufts of this very fine looking grass in here. And that isn't a fine fescue, it's Kalinga. You can actually tell this little guy, as close as it is, as it is to the ground, there is a little seed there, seed head. It looks like that. And obviously as the plant gets bigger, it, get, it gets bigger too. And that causes you even more grief. So this is, I think, where the epicenter of my problem uh, is. This is where it came from. And I think that I created the issue when I reset my height of cut because I didn't put the catcher on the mower. And I carted seed all the way from here, back and forth. And I think that I just created the issue for myself. And the same thing with yellow nutsedge. It may have just been in there. Uh, and obviously now with the wet conditions that we've had, which is prime opportunity for sedges to take advantage. They love the soggy soils. This is now the circumstance. I'm even loaded with mushrooms all over the place at this point in time. Although I think that it had something to do with the sewage spill some time back. But uh, yeah, nice soggy grounds equal nutsedge or sedges growth. And Kalinga is obviously a sedge. So let's have a look at this yellow nutsedge. So these, for example, are Kakuyu. And then this here is the sedge. And if you look at the one side of the leaf, it's like a bit of a pale, almost whitish looking green color. And the other side is a natural medium green color. And it's shiny on the one side. The other side is a little bit more matte. And if you look at it from the top, it's kind of a triangular shaped leaf. You can actually see the vein or the center ridge on this one here shows you how triangular it is if the video isn't picking it up for you properly. So there it is, yellow nutsedge. Now I don't have a, a picture of or an image of the seed head. I tried to look earlier on to show you here, but I think I took a video clip at my father-in-law's place the other day and that will give you an indication of how the sedges can, or well, the seed of the yellow nutsedge can look. And then for those who already know, there's some oxalis coming back again. This is the yellow wood sorrel version, but we'll tackle that on a different day. Now with any product application, there has to be some planning. First things first is check for a gap, like that week of clear sunny skies. Not piping hot, also not too cold. And make sure that it's dry. It has to be no rain. You've got to have at least 10 hours clear on the day that you apply a herbicide or just about any product. Most products are normally around the 10 hour mark. Read the label for exact details of the product. Once you've found the day, the week that you're gonna do a herbicide application, you mow the lawn. You then leave it alone for three days. On day four then, you come back and that's when you're gonna spray the herbicide. And the reason that you leave it alone is not just so that the weed can get a little bit bigger, it's so that the grass's wound can close up. So you don't spray poison straight into the open wound and cause more discoloration or even death upon your grass. Even if the herbicide is designed for it, it can still cause problems when it's got an open wound. So your weed will be a little bit taller, and that in particular means that when you spray the herbicide, the whole weed's leaf becomes nicely saturated. And then on the day that you spray, you spray first thing in the morning, so the plant is nice and chilled out and it's nice and strong, the grass in particular, and that means the herbicide can be taken up into the weed properly and that your grass stays mostly safe. All right, so this section is recorded a little bit later in the day. I've already done the spray job. It was just too windy, so I went out, got the spray job done quickly, uh, recorded that little bit that you just saw there now on what the weeds actually look like. And now we're just gonna talk about the product for a sec. Now actually, before you can do any of that, you need to have measured the length and the breadth of your yard area so that you can determine the square meterage, the surface area of the yard, so that you can know how much product you need to make up. You then need to obviously have a pressure sprayer. You can choose to use an adjuvant or not if that is applicable to the product. You have to have read the label to know if you can use any old wetting agent. Not all of them are the same. I've said this before in other videos. Best thing to do is actually know what it is that you need to use by reading the label. You're then gonna need a scale that can weigh in grams and then just something to help you decant from the bottle uh, into so that you can weigh and measure because weighing in grams is a little bit difficult so you're going to, have to weigh, put in a little bit then you're going to be over then you've got to pour it back and back and forth sometimes so get that right 
of course you're also going to need some PPE. All of these products are harmful in some way, shape or form. So you must at the very least cover your body to such an extent that the off spray doesn't make contact with your skin, definitely doesn't go into your eyes and your mouth. Don't inhale the stuff. So wear a mask, wear glasses, wear a hat, wear gloves, long sleeve shirt, long sleeve pants, closed boots, shoes. Uh, and when you're done with all of that stuff, you go out and you wash it. Now you can buy PPE equipment for spray jobs fairly inexpensively from various suppliers. I don't have that stuff today. I just wore normal clothes as you would have seen earlier on this morning. And then they got stuck in the wash straight away. But at the very least, you cover yourself because the stuff is toxic to some extent. All right, so here it is here. This is Syngenta Servian. The active ingredient is Halo Sulfuron. That will take control of the, the sedges in Kakuyu and Bermuda in particular. Um, I don't know if there are other grasses that it excludes, but I know it's for Kakuyu and Bermuda and a couple of other crop types. But I just want to show you something just as an example of why you should read the instructions. If you open the instructions, most people just try and find how much they need to mix. Okay, and in this one's case, I'm just going to tell you to you so we don't have to go find it. It's a half a gram of product mixed. Okay, and if you add something like super wet, you'll add five mils, but then you should actually reduce the amount of product per 100 square meters. So there I've given you that information. But here's the first page bit of information and this is why it's very important to read the instructions. So let's go over this quickly. I'm trying to hold this and read it behind this little stand here. First thing it says is handle with care. So handle it with care. Second one, poisonous if swallowed. So do not get this in your system at all. Store in a cool place. Okay, that will give you, you'll probably find there's more reason later on. Store away from sun. Okay, so that indicates don't store in a, you know, store in a cool place. Uh, and store away from a damp environment, so not in your bathroom and not on a shelf uh, or let's say in a windowsill. Uh, remain, it must rem remain in the sealed container. And then you need to store away from food, feed, and under lock and key. That's an indication as well that you really need to keep this stuff in check. Make sure that you wash your hands before eating, drinking, smoking, etc. Uh, keep out of reach of children, as I always say uninformed persons that's like your clever buddies who just uh, don't read the labels that's the uninformed persons they are uninformed when they don't read the label or people who like keep this away from people that you th perhaps have a disability to cer some certain extent where they can't handle the product properly do your part in that circumstance then as well and obviously animals um, some animals are even smarter than us so that's <laughs> maybe they should spray this stuff for us then we've got avoid storage above 35 degrees celsius and that's most likely because it'll damage the product itself to some extent and then re-entry and this is quite an important one that they put it in bold there as well so re-entry do not enter the treated area until spray deposit has dried unless wearing protective clothing so there the first the very first thing in the instructions is an indication that you absolutely mustn't handle this product and for the most part most herbicides don't handle any of them without taking these precautions. Wear PPE, don't get the stuff on your skin, don't inhale it, don't swallow it, don't let any off spray go into your mouth or into your eyes. You must look after yourself. These things are harmful to you. I almost forgot something very important. This product, as with many others, you can see this This has um, already been dissolved and it's sat for a little while. And you can tell how there's like a bit of a, a whitish looking hotspot down there. And that is some of the product settling. You must make sure that while you're busy walking around that this product keeps being agitated. So you keep mixing it up while you're busy walking around, not just when you put it into the container. You have to keep doing it through the entire process. Otherwise, some of it might settle like that and you end up sucking a big dose right through your nozzle in one spot and you may end up killing off an area or doing some severe damage. Remember, the objective of lawn care in general is to try and have as little downtime as possible. That's like your target is to have as little downtime or yellowing as possible uh, or where you don't have a lawn to walk on. Now before we end the video, just some important information just about, in particular, the yellow and the purple nut sedge control. Uh, not, this product isn't just gonna nail the big boys quite so easily. All the little babies that have just been germinating, they'll get tackled quite nicely and it normally does a pretty good job of it. But if you've gone past the three leaf stage or where you already see that, that seed head on the top, those guys are going to be recurring. Um, you may see the thing die, like it'll disappear over the next few weeks, but it will recur and will probably be, have been from the bigger ones. So don't be despondent. Just get back in there again. 
about a month after this application now. So the big blanket spray application taking care of the mass of the weeds, whether it was for this nutsedge control or any other broadleaf weed, you deal with the mass first by you doing what I did now as a big blanket spray. And a month later, you go back again and you do little spot sprays, tackling the, the, um, the areas that have just popped back up again. And then you go back again and do it again on month three. So three applications is normally a good way to set yourself uh, up for a good result. Sure, I almost forgot an important part of this process and that's after you've done the spray job you need to leave it alone for at least two to seven days so in the instructions it says there and per what I normally say is leave most herbicides alone don't mow again for at least three days and so they say no cultivation processes they obviously talking to the people that deal in crops and that kind of thing as well so for you the cultivation process is mowing you leave it alone for at least two days um, up to seven days so i'm gonna attempt to leave it for a while if i get itchy i'll go and mow otherwise maybe after seven days we have another sculpt video let's see what happens i do think that this is enough information for this one so please if you're new to the channel give me a subscribe and a like if you like the video and if you want to see more of this type of content and if you have already subscribed and you are not getting notifications of my updates then just hit the little bell notification button there by the subscribe button and that will remind you every time i put up a new video anyway have a lucky weekend cheers